our farmers were producing very good food many years back. But today, look at what we are producing. Bad food, junk food, chemically produced foods. So we want our farmers to produce the way they were producing there before, indigenous food. GBIAC is a small organization that specializes in farmer trainings, in grower intensive and other community development solutions. So grower intensive is a method of growing food with minimal resources that the farmer has. We have been able to, to train more than 5,000 farmers and we are trying to heal our country. In Kenya, it's said that 60% of the people go to bed hungry at night. I'm John Jevons, Director of Ecology Action. Ecology Action's mission and my mission is to teach people everywhere what's the smallest area it takes to grow all your food. So if everyone in the world used that technique or a similarly effective technique that everybody could live well. The world is facing right now not just peak oil, but peak water, peak farmable soil, peak food. In as little as 70 years, the whole earth will be desert. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. All we need to do is transform with green energy forms. And I'm talking about a different kind of green than where we're used to thinking about. I'm talking about plant green, photosynthesis, growing soil. With Grow Biointensive, it's possible to grow an amount of soil in eight and a half years that it normally takes 500 years to grow. This method is based on techniques that have been used by the Chinese, the Greeks, the Mayans, and others. You can get higher yields per pound of food produced compared with standard farming practices. In these days of difficult financial challenges globally, being able to do a lot with a little is the name of the game. You can grow a complete diet in 4,000 square feet, sometimes less. And this compares with the 30,000 square feet it takes to grow the average U.S. diet. In 1982, we planned what became the Kenyan Initiative. Most parts of the country receives relief food. These people don't need relief food. You have tried to teach this community. If a farmer produces their own food, people will be eating healthy food and they won't rely on the food that is produced where they don't know. We want our farmers to adopt crop intensive and organic methods. The soil is the basic, it's the foundation. One of the principles of biointensive agriculture is deep digging or double digging. That allows for roots to penetrate without any hindrances. That allows for water to penetrate, air to circulate. The second principle is compost, and that is fertilizer that is made out of resources that the farmer has within his farm. Before the trash that they produce from the farm, they were just twisting it and even burning it. But right now they are using it as mulch and also using it for compost making. I was fortunate to meet Jibiak some maybe two or three months ago, and you can see how healthy the, 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 the plants are. These ones are here only one month and three days. If we don't feed our soil, then they will, the soil will not feed our plants, and then we, we, would not, we will not have anything to eat. I grew up and was born in a family of nine people, rather poor. When I was young, we, we would go for a day without food. Most of the times we slept hungry, waking up in the morning to go to school without food. 
that was the life. Looking at my past, I thought that it was good for me to really help the poor of the poorest. This project was started by my wife and myself. She works with women. When you teach one woman, you are teaching the whole country. When you teach a man, he will grow the crops. After getting the money, maybe he will go and drink, and it, it might not even come back to the family. But when you teach a woman, he makes sure that whatever he gets from the family, from the farm, everybody uses. I teach them about the nutrition. When you grow your own food, you get the whole variety. We have bananas that cater for carbohydrates, beans, and we have vegetables for vitamins. So the family is able to get the, uh, a balanced diet from the food from the garden. Many farmers are not able to have two meals per day because they don't have um, sufficient, they don't have enough. But if they are able to adopt the crop intensive techniques, then they are able to produce enough and they can eat any time. We also target women that are struggling with their families. This is uh, uh, one of our newest groups. They are doing what we call table banking. They are contributing some money, and that money will be given to one of the members. They contribute 20 cents every Monday. And after contribution of the money, they give it to one person. That person will use that money in whatever that they want. Probably they can buy a goat or some chicken or some rabbit. And then next time they'll give out money to another person, they'll do the same. So that empowers women economically. We buy chairs, makeups, plates, spoons, and even children have clothes. Uh, to my women group is a group that has old women, the youngest being 68 and the oldest being 98. And they like singing when they are doing their work. When they are digging, they are singing. Most of these principles were practiced by our forefathers. Long time ago, there were no chemicals. Long time ago, there were no fat chemical fertilizers. Long time ago, there were no hybrid seeds. It's only that it was neglected because of the technologies that have been brought. People today want faster. But by intensive agriculture entails you using your, your energy, working in the field, working with the nature, We still have a long way to go because many farmers have not yet been reached. Many farmers don't know what grow intensive is. Many of them are still using a lot of chemicals. I used to, to use the normal fertilizer the, from the, the factories and things, but then uh, things were not going very well. Once you spray those chemicals here, maybe after two days you have, your chest is becoming heavy, you need to, to go to, to a doctor. No, She has had high, high blood pressure and some other diseases uh, when she was using chemicals, but right now she's healthy because she has changed from chemicals to organic. And because those foods, those crops are organic, then now you feed your chickens organic, you feed your cow organic, you get organic milk, you get organic <laughs> organic eggs, you get organic meat, so you, you are through. Our future aim is to reach as many farmers as possible. After we have trained them in global intensive, these people will go out there and train other farmers. For all Kenyans to be able to learn faster is to learn by seeing, not just giving out lectures. We say that seeing is believing. So we'd like to establish satellite agricultural centers all over the country. We want to use this farm as one of the satellite centers so that farmers around here can be able to come here and train. Many farmers visit him 
to see what he's doing in his farm because he's a model of other farmers. And many people do come here to see exactly what he's doing and how he's doing it, and they emulate him. In our five years plan, we need some resources that will help us to reach out to many farmers who are far away. Water is very important and we need facilities and all that entails funding. If we have enough water, we shall produce vegetables here, we shall sell and income to run our activities. If we have a classroom, many people come here and train. shall be sustainable. Biointensive agriculture is holistic approach. It is farmer friendly, it is environmental friendly, it is affordable to any kind of farmer, whoever poor or whoever poor or rich. I would encourage people to adopt biointensive agriculture technologies because it's the only thing that will save this world.